Hi, and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast. I'm Sonia Wood, and this is Season 3, Episode 12. In today's Part 11 of the Abundant Life audiobook, which I'm sharing in this um, podcast series, I talk about a testimony from another person who was traveling the road of the journey through cancer. And this person, Lorraine Day, was a tremendous gift to me while going through the valley. I also speak about, in this particular part 11 of the Abundant Life audiobook, I speak about some of the physical challenges that I had. And they can be quite graphic. Here's a little warning for those of you who would rather not listen to graphic details of some of my realities. But I do hope that you can listen and that you will listen because um, right near the end, I share more on the life that I received from the Word of God. So I hope you can get past all the graphic details of the realities, the physical realities, so that you can um, hear the whole thing in, in context. So I'm not going to chat on more because this um, part is giving the story, herbal therapies and so on and so forth. So let me leave this with you, part 11 of the Abundant Life audiobook. Um, we are sharing it here in this podcast series, but if you would prefer to have the, the whole audiobook as in just, you know, so you can just listen to it from beginning through to the end without the little intros that I do on these podcasts, then you can do so because this audiobook is available just wherever audiobooks are distributed or sold. So you can perhaps look for it out there if you would like to listen to the whole book. But for now, here is part 11. Thanks for listening. Part 11. Herbal Therapies and Introducing Dr. Lorraine Day. I mentioned Keith Day earlier in this book in part 6. He is the herbalist who helped me on the road to recovery. He has many herbal products which he supplies to people suffering with cancer or any serious illness, as well as for those who simply want to improve their way of living and their general health through detoxifying their bodies. I could list here all the various herbal blends and tinctures, which are herbs blended in an alcohol base, such as Essiac, which were vital herbal treatments in curing me of cancer. But I think it would be more beneficial for you to do your own research if you are wanting to be more serious about detoxifying your body and making it well. I know there are a multitude of choices of herbal therapies and detox options, so it can become rather overwhelming and even confusing to know which is the one that will work for you. God led us on each path, and so we are confident that what was discovered along the way was a result of His leading, especially when that discovery bore such good results. Dr. Lorraine Day was one such discovery. Dr. Day was also a cancer sufferer, but she was completely healed through the natural approach. Dr. Day is a specialist medical doctor who, once discovering she had cancer of the breast, decided to not follow the surgery and chemo approach. This, of course, was largely frowned upon by her medical colleagues. Yet she has shown many how natural healing is beneficial in numerous ways. Due to her approach and her sharing of the methods she was using, Dr. Day has not received good publicity. So if you're doing research on Dr. Day, you may not find good reports. We, however, were supported tremendously by the methods she adopted for her own healing, and consequently we share now with you what she has produced, which has been of great support to us. Her production's titles are Sorting Through the Maze of Alternate Medicine, Cancer Doesn't Scare Me Anymore, Diseases Don't Just Happen, Drugs Never Cure Diseases, and You Can't Improve on God. We are thankful to God for putting on our path what He knew we needed for our specific circumstances. He knew what was needed when. We remind you to constantly seek His guiding, His purpose and His way for you personally, for your specific circumstances and condition. Dr. Day 
shares quite graphically her experiences of her journey to wellness. It was because of this that I did not feel so alone, as though I were the only one who could be suffering with such unusual difficult symptoms. Dr. Day shares with us in her productions how she had to rehydrate herself via anal enemas. This is very personal and graphic, yet because she spoke so openly of her own struggles, when I had to adopt such unusual ways to help me survive, I could face it knowing there was someone out there who had already experienced it. This most definitely helped me not to have as much fear of the unknown as I was facing daily. Instead, it helped build my faith. I had to walk in what I did not know, what I had not been taught, what I had not experienced. Yet I had the gift of Dr. Day to encourage me on, as she had experienced it all before me. I truly believe this miraculous discovery of Dr. Day was a gift to us from the Lord. As much as it might be a bit gruesome to include some physical facts of my experience, I do so in an attempt to share that what Dr. Day shares on her productions, that it is not unique. When people watch and listen to what she has to say, they find it unbelievable and even go to the point of accusing her of not speaking the truth. Well, I can verify that what she shares are too experienced. Obviously not all exactly as she did, but very similar. I shall be bold enough now to give some of my own graphic details. After detoxifying for some weeks, I began to pass tumours. Well, what looked like tumours. Things which gave every appearance of what one thinks a tumour looks like. Never in my life had I ever seen such a thing in the toilet bowl and I knew they had been passed out of my own body. What joy to flush a tumour down the toilet, rather than have to have it surgically removed. I also passed a huge quantity of waste which had the appearance of black shredded bark. Then there were long, gross, scrambled, stocking-looking objects, which too were flushed down the toilet. After doing a kidney and liver detox, I flushed away hundreds, probably thousands in fact, of little stones objects which gave the appearance of little pink, green, black and yellow pebbles. Now this may all sound somewhat alarming, but it is all fact. At the time of my passing all this, Keith Day, who was monitoring my herbal detoxifying at the time, suggested we take photos of what was being deposited in the loo. At the time, I found the suggestion to be completely mad and disgusting. Who would want to photograph the very thing one is only too pleased to be rid of? But now, in good old hindsight, I realise why I should have taken his suggestion more seriously. We find it difficult to help people really believe the truth and facts of the matter, which are, I flush my tumours and every other awful, wasteful, toxic, poisonous matter out of my body and down the toilet. Lastly, the one physical condition which took a very long time to heal, in fact a couple of years, was the prolapse rectum, which was the result of the enormous, size of an orange, rectal tumour. It appeared that I may be left with this most difficult physical complication forever. It took so long to heal that I truly began to believe it would be impossible for this prolapse to fully heal. I was advised by so many good-meaning folk that I should go for repair and reconstruction surgery. Once again, each time we put this to the Lord, he convicted us to not go that route, but to continue to wait and be patient. This condition, the prolapse rectum, caused me tremendous pain while passing stools, to the point of fainting at times. Many times I felt this was too difficult to live with. I was unable to walk upstairs or banks due to the discomfort and pain caused by using the muscles needed for this. Yet, today I am fully healed of this condition, and that was without any surgical intervention. It is miraculous. God has shown us how incredibly he has designed our bodies to heal and how amazingly they do just that when we treat them well. The healing of the prolapse rectum was the longest and slowest of the healing processes, purely because of the severe damage to all the muscles. Another aspect of my healing worth mentioning here is that years before the cancer diagnosis, I'd been diagnosed with diverticulitis and irritable bowel syndrome. After specific detoxifying of this condition, I passed many objects which resembled black stones. 
I no longer have these conditions, or a prolapse rectum, or cancer, or any allergies. When I think of all the various health struggles I lived with, from the most minor being irritating food allergies, or constipation, to rectal and colon cancer, to what I live with now, abundant life. Thank you, Lord. As an introduction to the next section, pain management, I share here with you a scripture which was very real to my personal experience during cancer. When I was at my lowest point in health, I was 20 kgs below what I should have been for my heart and frame. Job 33 verses 14 to 26 For God does speak, now one way, now another, though many may not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears, and terrifying them with warning to turn man from wrongdoing and keep him from pride, to preserve his soul from the pit, his life from perishing by the sword. Or a man may be chastened on a bed of pain with constant distress in his bones, so that this very being finds food repulsive and his soul loathes the choicest meal. His flesh wastes away to nothing and his bones, once hidden, now stick out. His soul draws near to the pit and his life to the messengers of death. Yet if there is an angel on his side as a mediator, one out of a thousand, to tell a man what is right for him, to be gracious to him and say, Spare him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom for him. Then his flesh is renewed like a child's, it is restored as in the days of his youth. He prays to O God and finds favour with him. He sees God's face and shouts for joy. He is restored by God to his righteous state. Proverbs 3 verse 5 Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding.